Today we're having a look at the new Belmodo 10 Spherical and with me is the head of sales, Gaz. Gaz, mate, we've been friends for a long time. A long time, good mate. to catch up again. Definitely, good. Thanks for having me along today, Brendan. Great to see you again. You too, mate. Now, more importantly, very good that you gave me one of the new Belmodo 10s, mate. I've had a bit of a go on it, love it, but you're here to tell us more about the actual facts of it, the changes from the 9 to the 10, and of course, what's been new on it. Definitely, definitely. So I'm glad you've liked it. It was good for us to get you into one of those a little while ago and get a bit of background and actually yep. ride with it and see what you thought of itself out there in the real world. So we just released these, first of all this year, as a limited edition helmet in April, only a thousand worldwide. And this is our flagship helmet that replaces the Moto 9 Flex. So a bit of the history there is we released the Moto 9 back in 2011. 2015, we came out with the Moto 9 Flex and then pretty much straight after that was released in 2015 we started the development and the technology to upgrade pretty much everything from the 9 Flex into the Moto 10. So it's been about a good solid five years of uh, research and development to get us to where we are today. And is this normal protocol for Bell helmets, say five to six years in research? Yeah, definitely in a technical helmet and this is def definitely in the technical. In the, in the close to 70 year history of the company, this is our flagship product. This is the, the sort of the, the tip of the spear as far as everything that we have learnt over this time in helmet and safety technology yep. and we've thrown everything at this one. So about five or six years is pretty typical for a high-end helmet development time. Can I throw a very technical question at Absolutely. you? Absolutely. And one that probably everyone out there is asking is, you come out with a Belmodo 9, and this yeah. is not just you, this is with every product that comes out. This is the best, the best in the world. We're never going to see anything better than this. And then it was amazing, the technology that came yep. out in that. And, it's, and there is a bit of it that's followed over into the mm -hmm. 10. How do you come up with new technology in that time, mate? It's amazing. Yeah, we make it better and safer. Yeah, we're, we're pretty unique in the setup with the business is that we're across a lot of sports. So we're not just you know, motocross helmets. We've got road racing helmets at the MotoGP level. We've got bicycle skate. Uh, our sister company as well is in the snow world as well. So we've got a lot of experience in basically helmets and uh, head injuries. We get a lot of data in our research and development facility called the Dome up in Northern California. Yep. And we're constantly looking at ways to, well, to break things you know, on the outside, the helmet, so we can protect the head. So yep. our boys up there in the, in the lab coats, the really smart guys up there in Northern California over in the States, they're, uh, they're always breaking things, always finding new materials. And that's really what it comes okay. down to, is new materials and yep. application of those materials and how we can make improvements. Because largely, the, you know, up until you know, maybe 10 years ago, a motorcycle helmet hadn't really changed a lot with a that's hard right. outer shell and an EPS yeah. liner. So yeah. for this helmet, for the Moto 10, there is only two carryover parts from a Moto 9 Flex, and that's the, uh, the, the, vi the visor screws that we've got here, the visor screws and the strap retainer. Everything else is 100% new from the ground up. So that's what you get in six years' work. <laughs> yeah. Good to see they're working hard. They are, there. we keep the boys working. And the other thing too with Bell as a company, is you just do helmets, that's it. Basically, that's right. That's all you make. That's right, yeah. We, we've always been, you know, like I said, nearly 70 years, whether it's been automobile, you know, we've got you know, world champions in Formula One, mm. IndyCar, V8 supercar, all forms of head protection in motorsports. If it's got wheels or an engine, we'll have a helmet for you. But that's it, no messing around with anything else. The one thing too, it comes with a trusting name, Bell. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Tell me the things that have changed in the Bell Moto 10, mate. Okay. so. Starting with the outside, and that's the most important part we, you know, to start looking from, we've got a 3K carbon fibre shell. Now carbon fibre has been used in, in many helmets for, for a long time, whether it's a full carbon helmet or a partial carbon helmet with the blend. What's so different about this is we're the first company in the world to make a two-piece shell. It's what we call a segmented shell. And we've engineered this in a way to open up the top part of the helmet on the inside to allow a lot more airflow. It's got a very unique patented uh, proprietary technology, the aerospace technology, to bolt the two parts together. It can't be disassembled. We've tried breaking them with everything mm. that we can and we cannot pull these things apart. So you're telling me normal, normally helmets are just one, one shell. That's right. This is two shells together, bolted together. That's right. And, and you said there's no way that that's going to come up because most people are going to go straight away, mate, that's going to fall apart as soon as I have it. Crash. Absolutely not. Much like a, a modern Formula One car is made out of carbon fibre and key components are bolted together, mm. or a modern jetliner, like a big Boeing, that kind of technology. That's where we're at with assembling the two pieces together for the helmet. Yep. 
what it does is two, two key advantages is you get massively improved airflow, and that was the first reason for doing it, by opening up the whole helmet, and if you can see underneath it, you'll see the, the, the overlap between the top and the bottom. That allows the, all of the hot air to come out of the helmet, so the cold air comes in, blasts out the hot air there as well, but it takes out some of that rigidness that carbon fibre is known for right. in, in a helmet. Yep. So that Which adds, is important. Absolutely. You don't want a helmet too stiff, so a solid carbon fibre helmet, great for your Formula One car, but not in your head. You want that little bit of energy absorption through the helmet. Exactly. So the two-piece design manages some of that initial impact energy through the outer shell as well. Then of course on the outside of the helmet we've still got our flying bridge visor that we've had since 2005. So we're the first company to introduce a breakaway visor. Yep. Great to have this in a helmet. We're starting to see others come along as well. This is part of our energy absorption. So you, you don't want a big stiff visor. Uh, yeah, well for dirt bike riders especially, it's really, really, really important to have this because of we're hitting the ground yes. from a height. Yes. Not only like road bikes are probably a little bit lower and They're sliding. They're going to slide in. Your dirt bike riders, whether you're an enduro or a motocross or a supercross rider, you're going to come head first into the ground. We want a soft, pliable visor mm. that's going to break away and be part of the energy absorption. So you're not getting that energy transfer straight into the middle of your head. So yeah. we've got no center mount. And pushing you back. That's right. So there's no center mount pin, nice little breakaway pins on the side of the visor as well. This also allows the air to flow better over the top of the helmet, drawing yep. that hot air out of the helmet. So we've got improved ventilation as well. So that's a key part to the outside. And then when we move to the inside, you'll see we've got our new spherical liner system that we've got that's been the next advance from the flex liner system. So, and, and talk me through, you've still got the three, is it three layer system that you have? This is actually now down to a two layer system. We've right. gone from a three layer system in the flex, yep. three different materials that's for it. energy absorption and rotational energy management. So that's yep. a key thing these days is the rotational energy so that your brain's yeah. not moving around inside your head. But with the extra movement that we're getting with the spherical liner system, much more than we would in the Flex or the Moto 9 MIPS helmet that we've got significantly, yeah. we've got a 360 degree ball and socket system inside the helmet, so you get a lot more movement of the internal liner system. We've been managed to do away with one of the materials. It's a two piece different materials, EPP, e your standard EPS as well, and that'll absorb your low and mid speed yes, and then your high speed impact as well. So yep. it's across the board, you're going to get low, mid and high speed impact absorption, as well as the all important rotational energy absorption as well that you can see there with the spherical liner. And this is a bell system, the spherical liner yes. is a bell system, not an, is it in conjunction with MIPS? No, it's, it's our proprietary technology that we've worked with MIPS. So essentially the, the entire, or the red part that you'll see on the inside of the liner, mm -hmm. that's that slip plane coating, that's yep. in the style of a MIPS. So we've sort of partnered with them but only Bell is using these. We're using these in our motocross helmets and the Moto 10 spherical and a couple of mountain bike helmets as well. So we've got that in a full face okay. and open face mountain bike helmets as well. So we're getting that across the cycling and that's our proprietary technology that, like I said, the boys have been working for five or six years. Yeah. They've got to come up with something good. So <laughs> that, that, that was their- And uh, something safe. And, and the other thing too is with the motocross viewers out there, the guys, the racers have been using these for about a year or so, is that right? Yeah, we, Testing. yeah, so all of our athletes on uh, the global scene, the US scene, uh, MXGP and the full AMA series ran only Moto 10s last year. Yep. And then the year before that, uh, Eli and Cooper Webb were, uh, did the final Supercross in them as well. And then we went to full full racing in all of the, uh, the outdoors the previous year. Yep. And we just wanted to get those things sandblasted and just destroyed. So we do real world testing. I've had quite a few of the helmets. Uh, and I, I over also the year. know that they do a lot of testing when they're practicing as well, and there's no cameras around yes. to actually yes. let them get out and test. Yes. So cameras. we had, so we had uh, Dylan Ferrandis in particular was one of the key key test guys that we've had, mm. and then we do a lot of helmet fitting and everything. So I've seen the evolution of the helmets backwards and forwards over the last couple of years. Is that not, not just the fit, but the materials that have been used. But when they went racing, give or take one or two little nips and tucks here and there, 99% production. All our riders wear production helmets. This Pro Circuit helmet that comes out in January next year, this was done and painted at exactly the same time as the Pro Circuit team's helmets were painted at the start of this year for the Supercross Series. Oh. Our guys wear production helmets. 
cool. Yeah, just like your special one that you've got is an athlete helmet with your special <laughs> yeah. MXTV colour scheme that we got for you. Athlete helmet. <laughs> um, our guys all wear production helmets. I've got a bunch of them at, at the office here in yeah. Melbourne and there's no difference to production. So we're very proud to put oh. our guys in. What we build and what you can buy and wear yourself is the same as what the champions are racing in. That's fantastic. Now, yeah. last of all, yep. and probably most important for a lot of us dirt bike riders, is um, ventilation. Absolutely, and that was that was one of the key things that we were looking for in this development of this helmet is, again, a lot of technology has been quite stale over the last few mm -hmm. years. Uh, helmet standards and testings are getting tougher, which is great, and we certainly encourage that and push it, but we, we got to limitations where there were just little, basically little holes inside the EPS, and there was, you're limited by how big those holes were inside the EPS, and how big the holes were on the outside of the shell. Yeah. We have seen some competitors cutting very large holes in the tops of the helmets. We're not gonna do that. You open up big holes in tops of the helmets, you might be inviting trouble and sticks and rocks and things like to get to go there. So we wanted to have a solid shell, solid piece over the top of the helmet. Again, the two piece segmented helmet, essentially the top part of the helmet, and you can see this recessed lip all the way around it, that is a vent in itself. So the lower part of the helmet comes up to about here, and then the top part sits over like a cap over it. And then we have these massive big channels, as you can see inside the EPS helmet there as well. Huge volumes of air get pushed around through there. You couple that with more ventilation at the front, the entry ports. So we call this the thermal exchange air system. So we're getting more volumes of air put into the helmet, cold air coming in, blasting the cool air, the hot air back out the side of the helmet That's as well. the other important thing. It's not just getting air through the helmet, it's got to come out of the helmet too. That, that's right. So this is incomprehensible, the amount more ventilation exit points in this helmet because the entire top of the helmet becomes a vent, but it's completely covered and secure and safe yeah. because it's overlapping the bottom part of the shell. So we have a wind tunnel in a, in a design facility up in the US. So everything's tested through there for not only just aerodynamics and stability, but importantly, that airflow going in and getting that hot air back out the back of the helmet as well. Well, as I said at the start, mate, you guys were kind enough to give me a helmet to test, and uh, I've been riding in it for a little bit now, and uh, mate, it's, it's amazing, you know, not just with enduro riding, but also motocross riding, and, and I might be a little bit bigger, so I sweat a little bit, and uh, I have a lot of trouble with sweat, to tell you the truth. But this helmet, you know, coupled with the goggles that I wear as well, I have no problem with sweat yeah. coming through the goggles. The, the ventilation is one. The first thing that I, I picked up when I was riding with mm -hmm. the helmet was amazing. The other thing was, when you sent it to me, I've got to be honest, I picked it up and went, well, it doesn't feel any lighter, you know, and I, I don't think it is lighter because you can't, no. with the new standards now, you actually can't make your helmets any lighter, really. It's got to be... Without compromising the safety, that's yeah, right, yeah. Yeah, it's got to be really safe. So it wasn't any lighter, but when I put it on, with the balance of the helmet is yeah. amazing. That's the first thing I felt was, geez, I put it on and went, it feels really light because of the balance of it. It literally, that's a pretty common uh, remark that we've had from everyone, from end consumers, our sales team, dealer network around the world, professional mm. racers, everybody, it's like you lose 500 grams the second you put it on your head. It is, you know, it's we've, we've, amazing, yeah. the lightness. And, and the key features for me in this helmet is, I would say, just for now when I've been riding is ventilation, the, uh, the way that it fits is, is amazing, but the things that I love that carries over with bell helmets is, and I know it's quirky, but being able to take your liner out, and every helmet does to wash is good, but no one, not no one, but there's very limited people you can take that chin strap liner yes, out and yep. wash that as well. I know that sounds weird, but you sweat through there and get a lot of dirt and dust and yes. grime in there, and with the magnet one, it just makes it so easy to go, Doop. and even if it comes loose when you're trail riding, you know, if it comes off, and these are new, which are much stronger. Yes. But if, if it does come off, you just have whoop, and it, it clips back in, it's Pops great. back in a place, and we've we've really upgraded the line of material as well. And we've, again, looked outside the traditional motorcycle technology and working with a company called Virus that is known for making performance yes. sportswear undergarments. That's right. So they're antibacterial, antimicrobial, and it actually becomes part of the material. So it's the, the, uh, the, the virus is the company that makes it. Jade is the gemstone that is infused into the material. So it actually becomes 100% part of the material of the virus. There's antibacterial, antimicrobial, 
microbial and it has cooling properties as well. So it keeps your head a couple of degrees cooler and fresher instead of just a spray and liner that'll come out after yeah. a couple of washes that 99% of other, you know, other brands are using. And that is true because I use that, that same material and, yep. and virus as well for uh, undergarment. Yes. For when I'm riding. And it does keep me one cooler and a lot drier too when yep. you're riding around with the sweat and so forth. So that, that stuff works really well. And it's amazing the difference when you've got good quality material. Like they always say, oh, and I'm a big advocate of it is you pay for what you get. Yes, in the we've always used in our higher end product used higher end materials yeah. in our uh, whether it's the Moto Nine Flex, we use the the ecstatic material in that. Mm. Again, going outside the traditional world of getting liner material as well, paying a bit more for it. The end consumer pays a little bit more for it, but you're getting something that's so much better. And my 10 years of working with the Bell brand in several capacities, I've never had to replace a liner in one of these helmets at all, in under warranty. Wow. Nothing's ever rotted, no damage yeah, or anything. No, so it no lasts for the lifetime of the helmet. It's a fantastic material to use. To end with, the most important part of your body is your head. And uh, I, you and I will testify to that. We've been to a lot of doctors, I've been to a lot of hospitals, and a lot of doctors are telling me, I can fix most of your body, but your brain, very hard Can't to fix fixed. that thing. Yeah. yeah. So if you've got to put the most expensive helmet or the most money that you can put into anything yeah. is your helmet yeah. really is I, i'm a big advocate of get the right helmet get the right fit yes. as well make sure it fits well and and be comfortable and really if you're trail riding especially for six hours of the day you want to be comfortable want to be comfortable get ventilation and yeah. do your and do your research there's a lot of good information out there about the about helmets it's not yeah. all just about colors and, and aerodynamics yeah. and things bolted on the outside of it as well. Everything, we have a slogan, it's called Purpose Built. Everything on this helmet is there for a reason. All of our helmets, whether it's a street helmet, cruiser bike helmet, or a high-end you know, professional level motocross helmet, or all the way up to F1, everything's there for a reason to get the best product that we can for our consumers, because we want, we want to keep riding, keep everyone safe, so. Mate, thanks for coming on and telling us all about the Moto 10, and I'm guessing this is going to be around for another five years before you bring out something new and special Absolutely. again. Absolutely, we've got the boys working. Yeah, you've got the boys working some different avenues <laughs> at the moment, so uh, keep the whip cracking on those guys, and uh, yeah, keep this one coming for quite a, quite a few years to come. Yeah, yeah, definitely go out and have a look. They've got great colourways, and as I said, the, the Moto 10 is the top of the range and something you need to look at for sure. Absolutely. Thanks, Brendan. Cheers.